All right, I want to start by saying Bracketha Yahawu, Bracketha Yaharashai, Bracketha Yahawu, Bracketha Yaharashai, Kohala Yahawu Ba Hashim Yahashai, Kohala Yahawu Ba Hashim Yahashai, Ba Hashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine of truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahawu, which means he is or he exists. Ba Hashim, in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, we know his name to be. Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer, he is the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. Ba'ashim in the name of the Rakah Kodash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. The so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird, looking like the other nations in your spirit, bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh Ba'ashim and Rashai. You could be one of the elect. Shalom, we've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off following after false gods and false idols, not following the law, such a commitments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity. But through our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, being that perfect sacrifice in the flesh to the Heavenly Father, he's been given all power to be able to sit on the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, to be able to open the seals of this book, to be able to give the understanding to the very elect, the ones that would hear this word, and they would return back to the Lord. They would repent of their sins. And the Lord would be able to uh, purge away their sins and be able to what save them. Okay, while well, the two-thirds of the people of the nation of Israel are going to reject um, this word. Okay, they're going to reject what Yahavashai, um, because they rejected Yahavashai in the past. But the believers um, have always, always believed. But now the Lord has given them, um, you know, a pure remembrance of who we are. Okay, and, and um, who our oppressor is, and our oppressor is what Esau Edom, okay, which is the so-called white men of today. Okay, and being able to know who your enemy is, power. Okay, and what we're seeing is the downfall of our enemies, okay, um, you know, um, which is Esau Edom. Okay, the so-called white men of today. Okay, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Warburgs, the Schiffs. Okay, but the biblical nationality is being the Edomites, okay, Um Going back to, um, you know, Idumia, okay, in the Greek, which goes back to the pigmentation or the lack thereof, you know, having their blood showing through the so-called uh, white men of today, okay, they are in power. They control, um, they have the fatness of the earth, okay, in Genesis 27, um, that was given to them, and they would rule with the great sword. And with that great sword, they've gone throughout the four corners of the earth, rape, rob, and pillaging and Americanization of the land, okay, bringing forth their white pale face image, bringing forth their um, their beast system, which their beast system is um, the deadly wound being uh, healed, okay, um, the rebirth, the Renaissance era, the rebirth of the Roman Empire, okay, of them coming out and deceiving the nations, and again, being able to have um, the commerce, being able to have the money to be able to, um, you know, buy off certain people through what bribes. OK, and America has been that source of of that whore. OK, that's fornicated with these different nations that's, uh, you know, sits on these different waters as far as controlling uh, these different nations through, um, you know, the hammer of the earth, which is the, the America's military. OK, and through um, the petrodollar. OK, that's been, um, you know, dominating for uh, years and years as far as the petrodollar when it came into um into play in what, uh, you know, 1910, okay, um, through uh, in Jekyll Island, where you had, you know, uh, the, you know, um, the shift, JP Morgan, okay, um, uh, that were in the island, I believe it was five of them on Jekyll Island in 1910. And then 1913, it actually came out where they had the Federal Reserve uh, scheme, okay, which is what the petrodollar to have the dollar um, you know, these, these notes, these paper dollar that folds, having them to be uh, your actual currency when they're actually just debt. Okay. Because they're, they're, um, printed out of thin air. Okay. They're not worth anything. They're not backed by anything. Okay. They took away the gold standard. Okay. And with that gold standard being taken away, um, they don't have no value. They're just printing money that they don't have, which creates a uh, hyperinflation, which creates the devaluing of the dollar, which also happened in the, in the, um, the ancient Roman empire. Okay, that was one of their downfalls is they were uh, basically um, cutting the denarius, okay, um, you know, cutting the money, you know, as far as the silver, okay, and the silver and the gold, you know, and making it basically uh, cutting the materials, okay. Um, 
which is, you know, similar to what they do today, you know, with the money far as the Federal Reserve, but even the, the value of food and things like that, they made the food less organic and more what GMO. OK, and what this is leading to is the downfall of Babylon the Great. OK, so um, this article right here um, speaks about. OK, so this article right here speaks about um, it says Justin Jamie Dimon says the U.S. is addicted to debt It's created a dangerous sugar high in the economy. So, again, U.S. is addicted to debt. OK, so I believe they're like 32 trillion in the hole. OK, if you look at the, the U.S. Uh, debt clock. OK, but also on that debt clock, you have where each citizen, you know, last time I checked was like 90,000. Each citizen owes about 90,000 or something like that. And that was like, a, you know, about four or five months ago when I checked it. OK, so every person owes a certain amount of money, but they don't even know it. OK, they think that they're good because they have their bank account, you know, has a couple of dollars in it, but they're actually in debt going into that petrol dollar. OK, and the U.S. is addicted to to debt and it's created a dangerous sugar high in the economy. So what happens with that sugar high is eventually you have too much sugar. And what it happens, it starts to uh, take away certain uh, body parts. It starts to take away your leg. It starts to take away your eyes. It starts to take away uh, certain parts of your body. And that's what's happening to Esau Edom. And that's why, you know, the face, you know, that that, uh, that face right there is priceless. That's a thousand, you know, um, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. OK, and that's the, the mindset of how um, America is today, because America is once that flourishing country, that beacon of light. But now um, that that veil is off. OK, that once, um, you know, place people would come to be able to, you know, uh, build up their their, um, you know, build up their family, you know, be able to send their kids to college, you know, uh, white picket fence that dream is now been is now over okay that dream is actually was an illusion okay it was nothing but deception it was nothing but enchantments isaiah 25 and 7 it says he will destroy in this mountain so a mountain goes into uh, a governing body okay that's a metaphor for uh for a, a government right to the face of the covering cast over all the people and the veil that is spread over all the nations so the veil that has spread over all the nations because they were able to dominate these different nations um, through, again, their military, but also through their allies that they were allied with. OK, because you have the beast system being um, that uh, the Roman Empire, that deadly wound being healed, but it's spearheaded by America and NATO is joined unto that. OK, and they've been able to either through their economy, which is their money system or through their uh, their weapon system, through their um you know, through um, NATO, okay, they've been able to dominate the earth, going throughout the four corners of the earth, you know, spreading that fear, spreading that uh, Americanization on the, on those people, okay? It says, Isaiah 25 and 7, it says, There he will remove the cloud of the gloom, the shadow of death that hangs over the earth. And that's right, the shadow of death, because that's actually Esau, Edom, okay? And the valley of shadow of death is what America, okay? Because America is ruled by... um Esau Edom, okay, and they fornicate with all these different nations. That's why this great horror is set up for what great judgment, okay. Now that veil has been taken over the nations, and now what a shameful spewing is about to come upon what America, okay. People are already speaking about their leadership, okay, and people are already, as um, far as these different nations, they're making fun of it, okay, and um, and this is what. Um, this is all about far as seeing our, the, the downfall of our enemy, the things that the Lord uh, was, uh, you know, blessed us with that said that would happen in the latter times. OK, that the curses that would that were upon us would start to fall upon our enemy. It says Habakkuk two and five. Yet also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keep it that home. He enlarged his desire as hell and as death and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations to heap unto him all people. So all these nations have what drunken of that cup, okay? That cup of, um, you know, being American is a good thing. Um, you know, Christianity, the pale face white image, um, you know, chasing that bag, always worshiping money because now with the, the economy dying, okay, now what is the money worth? The money is not worth anything, okay? Because what is true value? True value is actually in uh, the wisdom that the Lord gives you. That's actually true value, okay? And their wine is, again, their philosophies that they push, you know, um, don't worry about the next person, 
you know, uh, you know, just be independent. Okay. Um, you know, don't fear the Lord, fear what man can do to you. Okay. That's you saw Edom being that proud man, neither keep it at home. Yeah. He's always in everybody's business. That's why they have over 800 military bases. Okay. Where they're able to, um, rape, rob and pillage the, the resources that are in these different lands. And then through their fractional banking, through their banking system, okay, they're able to have fractional banking where basically you put in a hundred dollars, they use about $90 of that and put it somewhere else. And then if they lose it, uh, okay, uh, they just call it a blue collar crime and everything's all right. These are the Ponzi schemes that are going on. And what happens is people lose their uh, their jobs, uh, people lose their families and they start to begin to what languish, to be exhausted. Okay. And this is what happens when you have a uh, wickedness in authority. Okay. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. OK, and there has to be a cleansing of that going back to that sugar. OK, uh, leads to what a disease. OK, which that the only person that can cure that disease is what the physician, which is our Lord, you have a shot. OK, which he's coming to put down all rulership and authority because this devil is going to keep going on and on. until there's nothing left because he is what Esau Esau means wasted the way he is. OK, um, and that's an omen omen. Okay, name prediction far as the, the things that this devil was set up to do. He's that vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. He's that border of wickedness. Okay, that's why he's gone throughout the four corners of the earth, rape, rob, and pillaging. And now his time has come to an end far as he's being exposed. It says Habakkuk 2 and 3, Shall not all these take up a parable against him, a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe unto them that increase that which is not his, how long unto him that latter himself with thick clay? Yeah, so this word uh, thick clay, the elders have taught us to, uh, to go into this word, which is a Hebrew word, I believe, abat, okay, which means heavy debt, okay? And what they have done is with that um, that petrol dollar, they've made everybody uh, trade in that currency, okay? Um, even if America wasn't in the deal, they, the, those countries had to say if, say if Saudi, I'm just saying this in, in general, say Saudi Arabia and Iran wanted to do a trade. OK, um, in the past. Right. They had to go through the petrol dollar, which the petrol dollar is America. So America is always getting in. They're always getting a percentage on, um, you know, whatever is going down. OK. And, and that's what made these other nations weak. OK, because they didn't have a military. They couldn't they couldn't uh, say anything back. OK. And now they're able to say things back far as through their uh, their money system, the money that they have or the people that they're allied with. OK, which you have the BRICS nations that are what aligning uh, together to come against what um, America and NATO. OK, come against what the B system. OK, so all the debts are being recalled far as the, all the things that America owes everybody. OK, for instance, I remember there was a, a thing about France and basically during the, uh, the gold standard. OK, um, the you know, France was owed a lot of money. OK, and they've been a long time member of, um, you know, uh, of ally with America. And so basically they said they don't have it. OK, they didn't have the money. So this is what it's like when you do uh, dealings with Esau Edom. OK, even even if you're a long time ally with them. OK, what do they do is when when they when they have to pay, they'll act like they did. No, nah, I don't I don't owe you that. OK, and so this is what you're dealing with is what America, which America means bitter and Babylon means confusion. OK, and this is spiritually Babylon, the great and spiritually what Egypt going into the bondage, because you, when you think that you, um, <clears throat> you know, you think that you're not in debt, you actually are. OK, check the, you know, check the uh, the scoreboard far as the national debt. OK, you have the national debt far as America is about 32 trillion or something like that. Right. Then. But you have each citizen. OK, that a lot of people don't even know. They don't even know that they're in a beat. OK, they're in heavy debt. Strong's like America is. 5671, Avtit. 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 So Avtit, yeah, the weight of pledges, heavy debts, okay? And they owe the, all these nations heavy debts, okay? That's why they're constantly always pushing war, okay? Because in the war, America, they're, they're the number one uh, arms dealer going into them having that great sword. They're the number one arm dealer as far as America, okay? So when they have, when they go to war, that's why all bankers' wars are, um, they're all wars are bankers wars. OK, because they're the ones that are pushing that because they're the ones that fund uh, both sides of the war. OK, and they have what, again, the um, they've been given the great sword. OK, and so with these heavy debts, also, what do they do? They, they, they sell promises that they can't keep. 
And then when the land, for instance, Ukraine, okay, Ukraine was pillaged and, and uh, America is sending money over there. But why are they sending money over there? Because they must be making money over there. Okay. There's, there's something going on and there's been many different stories as far as the, um, you know, the, they have super soldiers over there. Uh, they're running, you know, children. Okay. Um, they have a social credit system over there that's being built as far as the, the diet. So these different countries, they're, they're sold these uh, promises. Okay. If they would be able to, uh, again, um, sign over their rights. Okay. Their sovereignty rights, the IMF. Okay. And so what are they doing? They're, they're worshiping, uh, you know, they're, they're reigning with the beast that one hour. Okay. As far as following after their image. Okay. And it's leading to what these different heavy debts that are, um, that are coming upon what America. Okay. <clears throat> because again, America is what selling, selling you a dream. Okay. They're selling you a dream that it's all good, but meanwhile, they're broke. Okay. Heavy debts. That's like someone telling you, Hey, I'll loan you $200, but then they don't got no job. Okay. And that's what America is doing. It's just pawn goods because they're telling these different countries, everything's going to be all right. They're telling Israel it's going to be all right. Okay. Um, they're telling different nations that they're, that, that are part of NATO, everything's going to be all right. We're going to have this under control. That what is America saying? They're saying that um, the things with Russia, don't worry about it. We're good. We're just going to send some troops over there when they're they're thin far as um, they're thin far as their um, the military, American military. So pawn goods. Yeah. So, again, what are they doing? They're pawning out everything they have because America is also what a government or uh, well, government means mind control. But America is a um, corporation. So in that corporation, what are they doing? They're selling, they're selling the land. Okay. The, the Chinese actually own a lot of the land. Okay. This is a corporate, you are a corporate commodity far as you have a paper yoke that's wrapped around, um, as far as your birth certificate and, um, you know, your social security card. Okay. So they're able to track you, which means that now you're in debt because you are, uh, you have to either, either you work or, or even the people that are in prison, they get, they get paid off them. So America is what in heavy debt I beat, okay? And what what's happening is now the the captives want their money back, okay? They want their um their peace back. They don't want their military soldiers in their country anymore, okay? Habakkuk two and six. But soon their captives will taunt them. They will mock them, saying, "What sorrow awaits you, thieves? Now you will get what you deserve. You've become rich by extortion. But how much longer can this go on? Yeah. So how much longer can this go on? And now what? This is their time, okay? Because there's only a, a balance and a point that, um, you know, uh, far as this can be uh, pushed, okay? Habakkuk 2 and 7 in the NLT, suddenly your debtors will take action. They will turn on you and take all you have while you stand there trembling and helpless. And this which leads to America's economy being weak, okay? Um, also going into them, what they're actually doing. Because they they want the um the the great reset. They want an economy to crash. Why? Because when the economy crashes, they're able to come back in with their um, they're able to come back with in with their philosophies. Okay, that's what the great reset is all about. Okay, and then that sugar high that's leading to heavy debt, but it's also leading to where you have um you have heavy enemies, more enemies than they ever had before. Okay, far as the viable enemies, far as their enemies have ICBM missiles. Okay. So again, and who's uh, Jamie Dimon is a, um, a CEO or was a CEO of J.P. Morgan, which J.P. Morgan, again, is goes back to the uh, uh, what happened in Jekyll Island. OK, as um, far as the petrodollar and how the economy actually got built up over here in America. OK, and really how it got built up is by the blood, sweat and tears of Jake. OK, of slavery. OK, it says he points to the enormous surge of new debt taken on during the during the what? So the thing that happened, okay, a major debt. Why? Because they ultimately are going to dump the dollar, okay? But they have to have a certain event happen, okay? Because they um, they want to be able to control your buying and selling, Revelation 13 and 16, okay? There's an anonymous surge of new debt because, again, they want the people um, to be wanting after the government, okay? This is what this is all about is order out of chaos, okay? Problem, action, solution. OK, so with the with the people um, being in heavy debt, what are they going to do? They're going to look to their government for help. OK, and their government shall what help in vain. OK. 
is uh, Psalms 10 and 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud under his tongue is mischief and vanity. And that's exactly what that happened a couple years ago. Okay, they push it as it was something to be able to uh, help. But what did it do? It ended up doing the opposite. Okay, Psalms 10 and 7. And, and it, able to, it was able to make um, the rich people of America um, rich. Okay, as far as these elites, they were able to make millions and billions of dollars. Okay, while what happened, the um, the middle class got taken out because of the businesses, which that was all mischief. Okay, Psalms 10 and 7 in the NLT, their mouths are full of cursing, lies and threats, trouble and evil are on the tips of their tongues. Okay, yeah, on the tips of their tongues, because everything they say is a lie. Okay, and if they do speak, they speak with a, with a double heart. Okay, this is... um. Psalms 12 and 2, they speak vanity, every one with his neighbor with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord Yahweh shall cut off the flattering lips and their tongue is speaking proud things. So one of the ways that the Lord is cutting them off is what? Through their money system. They're not able to go around uh, with their money, you know, and say, I, I'll just pay you off. Okay. Now the, the judgment's beginning to come upon him and, they're, and the, the Edomites are starting to look like that guy on the, on the screen. Okay. We're on the sugar. It says, he says that money is like heroin in the hands of the consumers. That's right. Money is like, um, yeah, he says that money is like heroin in the hands of the consumers. Why? Because they push that. Okay. They push the, the worship of money because money is actually defense. Okay. But what do people do? They'll kill for, uh, you know, for a dollar. Okay. And that's the way that, that America pushes it is that if you don't have money, then you're nobody. Okay. That's uh, Ecclesiastes 7. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, but the excellency of the knowledge is that wisdom give it light to them that have it. Yeah, so the true um, money is actually the riches of the Lord. Okay, when you read um, Proverbs 8 and 15, let's see. Yeah, right here. This is wisdom of so uh, Saki Proverbs 8 and 11. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared unto it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Okay, and the witty invention is that they want to be able to crash the economy so they can bring in their, their mark of the beast. Okay, their, their, their stigma. Okay, that embedded inside your hand or your forehead. Okay, that's their that's one of their witty inventions. Let me read this in the NLT. It says, I wisdom live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. Yeah, so discernment between the things, the events that are actually going on. Okay, and we're headed into a time of what uh, great evil. Okay, because people are um it's not gonna be just about money, it's gonna be about food and water and shelter. Okay, it's gonna be about survival. Okay. Um, so let me read this again. It says Ecclesiastic 7. 12 wisdom and money can get you almost anything but only wisdom can save your life that's right isaiah 33 and 6 wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability at times okay that's the only way we can be able to be saved is having the wisdom of the lord okay um ecclesiastic 7 and 13 accept the way that power does things for who can straighten what he has made crooked that's right because esau edom can't be made right okay because the lord has set him on a path of destruction okay just like a two-third they can't get right Okay, that's why after the first or third um, admonition, what reject? Okay, because again, um, we're not in the time of playing around with people and people that are playing with the truth. Well, they're gonna find out when they're actually really in the game. When Esau Edom puts these these certain um, you know laws in place and these certain uh, um, you know far as um, you know uh, requirements. Okay, that's when the the rubber meets the road. When the things are gonna be popping off. Okay, and you're gonna wish that you didn't mock and scoff. OK, but again, this is only for the elect. This is Ecclesiastes 7 and 14. Enjoy prosperity while you can. But when hard times strike, realize that both come from the most high. Remember that nothing is certain in this life. Yeah, nothing is certain. That's why whenever you move, you got to, uh, uh, you know, uh, say, I don't want to rot you know, Lord willing. OK, because, again, um, we're just, you know, we're just vessels and the Lord is actually guiding us down the path. OK, the Lord guides our steps. Okay, and we're praying that is uh, what towards what righteousness, because we're seeing the downfall 
of our enemies and is coming into what perilous times. Okay, going into what uh, redeeming the times, being uh, circumspect, because with the crashing of the dollar, as far as these big banking systems, that's going to lead to the trickle down effect on the people that, uh, you know, on us. Okay, as far as the bank accounts that we have, because, again, they already spoke about um, there's going to be a fender for that word. And you have certain places that are that are sending out punishments for those that are speaking this truth. So that uh, bank account, as far as that spiritual bank account, has to be stacked up. OK, because, again, we're headed into a time of, of great darkness, but the Lord is going to shine that great light. OK, Ephesians 5 and 15, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yeah, so these days are evil because these devils are just getting started. OK, and they they love being involved in what extortion they love being involved in what uh, fear mongering. OK, Micah 6 and 12 for the rich men thereof are full of violence and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Yeah, their tongue is deceitful. OK, but but their mindset is who's going to stop us from doing this. OK, and the only and the truth is the only one that's going to stop it is what you have shy. OK, and through the words that he gives us uh, to be able to speak, we're actually wounding our adversary. OK, we're wounding our we're wounding our enemy. OK, which is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the one that's what crying out in this picture. OK, the one that sold you, you know, the one that sold you what the American dream, that it was all good, you know, that you didn't have to, you know, do this right here. It says that money is like heroin in the hands of consumers. And if you ever seen a, a heroin addict, OK, and how they act, OK, and, and their, their mannerisms, their characteristics, and that's how people act for money. That's why a woman will, will sell their ass. You know, for, for, for nothing, they'll lay up with different men every night, then then go back to their husband. OK, you have uh, men doing the same thing far as men being involved with men on men, doing all sorts of wicked abominations for what money. OK, uh, selling their souls. OK, we see it with these celebrities walking around, being buck break, wearing dresses. OK, this is this is the heroin that they're talking about. OK, and who brought that those those certain drugs over to what America Esau Edom did, and they made millions of dollars of that. That movie, Frank Lucas, was depicted uh, uh, by that, okay? Because how was he able to uh, uh, be free? What did he do? He At the end of that movie, he, to he told on everybody, okay? And then even to come to find out, that wasn't even his story. But the, but the thing is, is that it shows you, uh, look at the movie, um, you know, the, the, um, the, real Rick, the real Rick Ross, his story with Gary Webb, how they were putting drugs in the community, OK, they made they, they put us in harsh conditions. OK, um, stack this one on top of another and then put drugs and guns in the community. OK, and then had our people what stunning on, on our own people, stunning on people that that have hundred dollar housing. And then they're pulling up in, in a million dollar cars. OK, because they're selling you an illusion because Esau Edom selling you an illusion, selling you a dream. OK, there's a um, this quote right here. Okay, I was going to do another lesson about it, but this is always, when dealing with America, this is actually a true quote. It says, this is George Carlin, okay, it says, that's why they call it the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. Yeah, you actually have to be asleep. Asleep meaning you're not paying attention to anything that's going on, okay, which means that you're walking around in the valley of shadow of death. Meaning while you're not paying attention to what's what's actually being played out, what legislation's being passed, what are the people doing? OK, they're doing everything that it's according to prophecy that would happen in these times. OK, that's why it's very important to what listen to what the prophets are saying, the true men of the Lord, because they are the pulse of what the Lord is about to do. <laughs> OK, <laughs> you know, they and, you know, and, and you can you can feel it in the air like there's something popping off uh, about to pop off. You know what I mean? Um, just by the the, the people, you know, when, you, when you're looking at the people and you're looking at their countenance, there's something that that's. Um, there's something going on with them. You know what I'm saying? And what it is, is it's the changing of powers. Okay. And in the changing of power, there's always, a, a, you know, you have people that don't want to comply. And what happens is there's going to be casualties. Okay. And, but the elect are going to be all right. Okay. And so he says that money is like heroin in the hands of the consumers. That's right. So, and that's how people use it because they don't use it as a, a defense. They use it as I got a stun on my arm. Um, you know, I got to stun on somebody. I need the, I need the Gucci. You know what I'm saying? I need the Gucci. I need the velour. I need all these. I need the big chain. I saw this guy, you know, it was just a, a thumbnail. And basically the guy, he had 130,000, 
right? So what did he do? He bought a $20,000 chain, went to the hood, got robbed. Okay, so, (laughs) and this is our people. Instead of 30,000 investing in a home or something like that, because I believe it was in Detroit, okay? And I know that they have, um, you know, as far as they're living, the houses are cheaper. So he probably could have got a house or something like that. But what did he do? He bought a chain so he could stunt on his own people. What did his own people do? Robbed him, took it from him. Now now he has 10000 They probably robbed him of that too. See, this is the thing about money. It's, it, you can have money, but what are you using it for? Okay? And just like Esau Edom had a bunch of money, but now what, what did he use that money for? Wickedness. Okay? And eventually those, um, you know, wicked evils start to come out. And they start to be exposed. And then what are they being exposed by? The Lord's uh, men. Okay. First Timothy 6 and 9. But they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And that's what's happening with the people. Okay. Uh, the economy, as far as the Wall Street, you know, the Wall Street guys, the 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 ones with the Lambos and all that. Now they're starting to have uh, Hondas. They're starting to have Honda Civics. They're starting to have... Uh, homeless. They're starting to be homeless. Okay. So the changing, the trading of places, it says Ecclesiastes three, you know, Ecclesiastes 12 and three, it says in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. So who are the keepers of the house? The, the, um, wall street. Okay. They're the keepers of the house far as the money system that's going in and out. Okay. And right now what the the economy is in, what, um, they're in a, a bear market. Okay, where basically they don't have no no actual uh, uh, heavy assets they can touch. Okay, it's all just you no. Know, I believe liquid assets. As far as nothing can be able to be touched. Nothing is actually straight. It's a it's a bear market because a, a bear and a bull. You a bull is meaning that they actually have everything. Okay, it means that the top people are not just buying out the bottom guys to make it look like they got something. Okay, but they're they're actually in a bear market, which means that. <clears throat> the economy is what being shredded. Okay. And that's what, uh, the guy, Jamie Damon, Jamie, uh, Damien has talked about, you know, um, rethinking the dollar, these different, um, you know, analysts that go into actual, the, just the money system. Okay. So they know that something happening, but the thing is they think they can be able to come up out of the smoke. They think everything's going to be all right if they invest in crypto or Bitcoin, but that's not the thing you have to invest in the Lord. Okay, because the the keepers of the house are beginning to fall, which means that a, a, a one kingdom is being put down, another kingdom is being put up. It says Ecclesiastes twelve and three, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows will be darkened. And that goes into uh, these different businesses. Okay, a lot of these executive um, or these CEOs are killing themselves. Okay, and a lot of these uh, companies are being shut down. Old time places like Macy's, uh, J.C. Penney. Okay, even a lot of these WalMarts and different places are what being shut down. Why? Because again, the grinders have to what seize. Okay, these companies are going to be what shutting down. We saw a little bit of that a couple of years ago with what the uh, the thing that happened. Okay, it says. For and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and it shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. So when you wake up in the morning, you hear the what the birds chirping. OK, so when you wake up in the morning, you're not going to worry about the alarm clock or nothing ringing because, again, there is no work. OK, the doors are going to be shut. OK, because they want everybody to be in a, a smart city and they want to give everybody a UBI, universal basic income. And with that universal basic income will come with the mark of the beast. They want everyone to have something embedded inside their hand or their forehead. Okay. So, and this is going to lead to where um, there's going to be outrage of the people because people are so used to just going to work and being a slave. And now even that's going to be taken away. It says Isaiah 19 and 15, neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or the tail or the branch or rush may do. So there's going to be no more work. Okay. And what Egypt, this is spiritually what Egypt, America today, going into the bondage, going into what um, us being in hardcore slavery. Okay. Going into, um, there's not going to be any more work, which is going to lead to what Egyptian against Egyptian. This is Isaiah 19 and 2, I will set Egyptians against Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, and city against kingdom, and kingdom against kingdom. So again, uh, class wars and civil wars. And again, uh, modern day uh, Egypt is what America today. Okay? 
and our people, um, you know, as far as in, in America, they, they've come susceptible to just working every day and being a slave. They don't mind that Esau Edom takes takes out taxes out of their check, which goes into um, and leaves you in debt. You know, they're constantly raising raising prices, but they're keeping the wages the same. OK, and this is going to lead to what an outrage of the people. And right now, this is a scripture I want to get. It says. Yeah, Isaiah, and this is a double fold scripture. It says Isaiah 19 and 17, and the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of Yahweh of hosts, which he had determined against it. So again, that's a twofold scripture, the land of Judah, okay, going into what the, the head tribe of Judah, okay, which would be the so-called black men of today shall be a terror unto Egypt. Okay, and this is speaking about the two thirds that are going to be out there in the streets robbing people and doing all sorts of chaos. But also speaking about the prophets, we are a terror to what Esau Edom because we're exposing um, Esau Edom's wickedness. Okay, and that's making his judgment come what sooner? Okay, or come on time? This is Job 15 and 16. How much more abominable and filthy is a man which drinketh iniquity like water? So that's what they do because they're constantly running different schemes and and ways that they can be able to take people's money. And now the keepers of the house are beginning to what feel that at home. Okay, they're beginning to feel that where they, they have one last Lambo or they have one last Hummer. Okay, they have one last vacation house. Okay, Joel 15 and 16. How much more abominable and filthy is a man which drinketh iniquity like water? Yes, yeah, so they're constantly engaged in wicked acts because, again, to be in these certain rooms, you also have to be involved in the satanic rituals. Okay, to be even to even be able to rub shoulders with these with these people. Okay, that's why when you saw Martin Luther King uh, taking pictures with with the, with the Rockefellers, you know that that was that they were always uh, juiced in that they were low level uh, masonaries. Okay, Joel fifteen and sixteen. I read it again. How much more abominable and filthy is a man which drinketh iniquity like water? I will show thee here me in that which I have seen. I will declare. It says which. Which wise men have told me from the fathers, I have not hid it. Unto whom alone the earth was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked man travailed with pain in his days, and his number of his years is hidden to the oppressor. Okay, 21. A dreadful sound is in the ears, and prosperity and the destroyer shall come upon him. So that dreadful sound is what this new song being sung. Okay, because that's why um, when they saw us standing upon our feet, great fear fell upon the nations. Why? Because they know that that was the end of their kingdom. So the sound of terror rings in their ears, and even on good days, they fear the attack of the destroyer. So even when they get into their Lambos or they get onto their jets, they know that there, there is a time and an end, okay? Yeah, and so I want to read this. This is Joel 15 and 20 in the NLT. It says, the wicked write in pain throughout their lives. The years of trouble are stored up for ruthless, stored up for the ruthless. So yeah, their years of trouble are what's stored up for what that day of evil Okay, that day of evil, because the Lord is not going to at all acquit the wicked. Okay, and so when you see them like that, you know, hurt, holding their face, you shall know them by what their countenance. Okay, and what, what's happening is their countenance is beginning to come low. Okay, they're not able to, uh, you know, have that smiling face anymore. Okay, this is First Timothy 6 and 9 in the NLT, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by the many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into the ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Yeah, so they have pierced themselves with many sorrows, okay, which is going into what um, they have erred in the faith far as they, they, they stopped going on the straight path and they started to go on the broad way. And that's what people are going to fall for when they when the economy is fully crashed, okay? Because they're gonna they're gonna come back with something else, problem action solution. They're gonna come back with, hey, this is the this is the problem. People are gonna bug out, and then hey, we got the solution, which is gonna be the mark of the beast. And people are gonna err in the ways of believing in the Lord because they're gonna see it as a way of convenience, and the, and they're gonna believe that the Lord is not gonna be mad at them when the Lord told you many different times to not to not trust in your enemy. OK, and to watch out for um, Revelation 13 and 16, which is that physical mark. OK, but still many people are going to be what pierced through because they're going to trust in uncertain riches. OK. So. 
Second Chronicles 6 and 16, it says, And what agreement had the temple of the Most High with idols for your temple of the living power? As power said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their power and they shall be my people. So the Lord doesn't agree with what you worshiping what money, okay? And you what piercing yourself through, okay? And what's, what that's going to lead to is what the... um. First Timothy 6 and 17, charge them that are rich in the world. They have, it says, charge them that are rich in the world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living power who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So the Lord is the one that gives us all things to enjoy. Okay. And the Lord also told us that riches shall not profit in the day of wrath. Proverbs 11 and 3, the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but perverseness of transgressors shall be destroyed. Them riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteous deliver them from death. Okay, and that's what we're trying to do is be delivered from what Esau eat him. Okay. Yeah, this is um, 10. Proverbs 11 and 10. The whole city celebrates when the godly succeed. They shout for joy when the wicked die. Yeah, because ultimately a lot of the people don't want to actually be wicked. Okay, but the society is what's submerged in it. Okay, so they follow what their leaders. Okay, that's why when the righteous and authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn because the people are mourning because, again, the lifestyle that, <laughs> that Esau Edom lives is death. Okay, the, and it's hell. Condition played out on earth. Okay, that's like you have a you might have a, a guy in your neighborhood. You know, he's been killing everybody, and then finally he get caught or or he get killed, and everybody's happy. Okay, everybody. You know, <laughs> You know, for them, you know, everybody's happy. Why? Because finally they, they can be able to walk outside their house. They don't have someone doing that. And that's what Esau Edom is. He's just a, a bully that's going to be beat down. Okay. Ultimately by our Lord. Proverbs by our big brother. This is Proverbs 11 and 11. Upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper. But the talk of the wicked tears it apart. Yeah. So and that's going into democracy because that, that's what they push. Democracy pushes um, that do as that will spirit. Okay, and upright citizens goes into what the being the elect. Okay, the elect would be the upright citizens, far as they're they're to the best of ability following the um the law, statute, and commandments. While the rest of the world is what engaging in um the the adversary, engaging in what the uh, the evils. Okay, which is going to lead to the destruction. Yet yeah, Proverbs eleven and fourteen. Without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. Yeah, because their advisors are what transformers. Their advisors are what sorcerers on the left hand side, monthly prognosticators. Okay. There's another one. This is Proverbs eleven and eighteen. Evil people get rich for the moment, but the reward of the godly will last. Godly people find life. Evil people find death. Yeah, because they are allied with what uh, death. When Wisdom of Solomon 1 speaks about that at the, at the last um, precept, okay, speaks about to be allied with death and you had to make an agreement with it. And that's what Esau Edom has done. He's made agreement with the, what the left hand side, okay, Proverbs 11 and 21, evil people will surely be punished, but the children of the godly will go free, okay. It says the beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like gold ring in a pig's snout. Yeah, so because a, a woman that doesn't listen Okay, what's really the point of it? Okay, there's really, you know, if a woman don't listen, it's really, it's really for nothing. It's, that's why it says a beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. So you, you have that, that ring that's, that's beautiful. It's, it's worth something. Okay, but then the woman don't listen. Okay, and that's what it's like being in the, in this world because this world does not listen to what the commandments of the Lord, but they will. Okay, that's why the Lord is coming to bring forth his judgment. Proverbs 11 and 3. So, okay, Proverbs 11 and 23, the godly can look, the godly can look forward to reward while the wicked can expect only judgment. That's right. The godly can look forward to reward while the wicked can expect only judgment. And that's what's going to be coming down. Okay. And that's why the dude, um, Jamie Dimon is saying this. It says, we're on the sugar high. I'm not saying this ends in depression, but I think there's more inf inflate. It's like an inflationary forces out there. There's a higher chance that rates go higher. Inflation doesn't go away. And all these things cause more problems of some sort. Yeah, that's right. So all riches in one day have you know gone away. Okay, because there is a judgment for the wickedness that you have done. Okay, now it's reached up to the heavens. This is um Revelation 18. <laughs> Let 
Yeah, so Revelation 18 and 6 and 5. For her sins have reached into heaven, and her power have remembered her iniquities. Who's that her? That's speaking about Babylon the Great. Reward her even as she's rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and her cup which she had filled, filled to her double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I said a queen, I am no widow, and I shall see no sorrow. Going into um, Babylon the Great hasn't been taken down, okay, but it's but this time it will. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord thy power that judgeth her. So again, all those riches are going to be what uh, taken away, okay? And right now we're seeing the uh, the beginning stages of that because you have these rich men that are what howling, yeah, the misuse of riches. James five and one. I'll end it in this chapter. It says, "Go, go to now, you rich men, weep and howl, for your misery shall come upon you." So the miseries is going into. They're not going to have their kingdom no more, okay? Let me read this in NLT. It says, "Look here, you rich people." Weep and groan with anguish because of your terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth-eaten moth rags. Your gold and your silver have become worthless. The very wealth you were counting on. So again, gold and silver is never uh, worthless. Okay, but the thing is, is that the way that they got it. When you go into Sirach 10, it speaks about the unrighteous dealings and riches got by deceit. Okay, your gold and your silver have become worthless. The very wealth you were counting on will eat away in your flesh like fire. This treasure you have accumulated will stand as your evidence against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated for their pay. The wages you have held back cry out against you. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of the heavens armies. So again, the uh, the people that are the laborers, okay, are, are Jake, so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans. And now they're what they're going to be beginning to cry out because prices are going to be so high in the store that they're not going to be able to have shelter or food, okay, and that's all part of the plan because they want uh, the government wants everybody to go to them for help, okay. And what now these sins have reached the heavens, going into the, the great destruction. It says five. You have spent your years of earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. Yeah, and that's all you've done. You fatten yourself for the days of slaughter because all those um, riches got by the sea are going to be translated to one kingdom, okay. Uh, let me get that. Um, let's see. One that is what profitable. <clears throat> Sirach 10 and 10. The physician cut off the long disease. Who's that physician? Yaharashai. Who's the disease? Esau, Edom. And he that is today a king, tomorrow shall die. Okay. So again, uh, let me get eight. It says... Sirach 10 and 8, because of unrighteous dealing and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another, okay? And that kingdom is being translated to what? The kingdom of Yahweh okay? The kingdom of Yasha Allah, princes of the power, okay? This is uh, Sirach 10 and 4, the power of the earth is in the hands of the Lord, and due time he will set over it one that is profitable, our Lord Yahweh and the hand of thy power is upon prosperity of man, and upon the person that ascribes shall he lay his honor, Bear not the hatred to a neighbor for every wrong and do nothing at all by injurious practices. Pride is hateful before the Lord and a man by doeth one commit iniquity because of unrighteous dealings and riches got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. OK, and the kings, the kingdom is being translated to what uh, the kingdom of ya, what Yasha Allah. OK, which is what the ultimately the king, you know, is the kingdom of, uh, of Solomon. OK, because Solomon is what um, Yaharashai. Okay, so I want to get this scripture because the brother had brought this out. Let me see if I can remember it. This is, yeah, Sirach 47 and 13. Solomon reigned in peaceable times. So this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a peaceable time once these devils are put down. Solomon reigned in a peaceable time and was honored for that most high, made all quiet round about him that he might build a house in the name and prepare his sanctuary forever. How wise was that in thy youth as a flood filled with the understanding thy soul covered thy whole earth and now fills it with the dark parables. So again, going into the knowledge, wisdom, understanding that Solomon had. Okay, and now, uh, now Yahweh Shai has been given all power. Okay, and now what his soul is covering with the whole earth. Okay, 18, by the name of thy Lord, thy power, which is called thy power of Israel, thou to gather the gold and the tin of dust, multiply silver as lead. Excuse me, 22, this is the point. 
But the Lord will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish, neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect and the seed of them that loveth him, and he will not take away wherefore he gave a remnant unto Jacob and out of the root unto David. Okay, going into the tabernacle of David being built up as the days of old. Okay, our Lord Yahweh Shai reigning for what forever. So with that, call on Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Rakakwadash, Shalom to the elect, Kwam Yashallah.